Nanny. Hey, money's here. Go, please. Go. Demon. Demon, forgive me for quarreling with you last night. Oh, forgive me for everything. It was all my fault. You know I'd forgiven you. You'd hardly slam the door. Your perfume still hung in the air when I'd forgiven you. I stole that perfume. From whom? It's me. And the rouge, too. And the face powder and the dress. And in whose honor did you get yourself up so elegantly? Oh, darling. <laughs> darling, what a fool I was to waste a whole evening. A whole beautiful evening. Oh, we'll have other evenings. <laughs> and other quarrels, too. My happy love is full of quarrels. Oh, don't laugh at me this morning. Hold me tight. Tighter than you have ever held me. I want all your strength to flow into me. There. With all my strength. You love me as a woman. As a woman wants to be loved, don't you? Your arms around me. Your hands so warm against my back. They aren't lying, are they? This morning, this special morning, I must know. Antigone, darling, I love you exactly as you love me. With all of myself. When you think about me, when it strikes you suddenly that I'm going to belong to you, you have the feeling that, that a great empty space has been hollowed out inside you, that there is something inside you that is just dying. Yes, I do. <gasps> That's the way I feel. <gasps> there. Now I have two more things to tell you. And when I've told them to you, you must go away instantly without asking any questions. Swear that you will. Well, what are these things you're going to tell me? Swear first that you will go away without one word. Without so much as looking at me. Please, please swear it. <laughs> I swear it. First, about last night when I came to your house, I haven't told you why I put on his mini's dress and rouge. I did it because I wasn't sure you loved me as a woman. I was trying to be like any other girl. Was that right? Yes, and you laughed at me and we quarreled. And I thought I was going to cry, so I ran out of the house. But the reason why I went to your house... Right. Listen to me, Heman. I wanted you to want me very much and to take me. I wanted to become your wife last night. Because I love you that way, very, very strongly. And also because, oh, my darling, my darling, forgive me. I'm going to cause you quite a lot of pain. I wanted it also because I shall never be able to marry you. Never. Antigone. Demon, you took a solemn oath. You swore it. Leave me quickly. This very day, the whole thing will be clear to you. Please, Eamon, go now. It's the only thing left that you can do for me if you still love me. Why did you try to bury your brother? I owed it to my brother to unlock the house of the dead in which my father and my mother are waiting to welcome him. Polynices has earned his rest. Polynices was a rebel and a traitor. He was and my he... brother. You knew the punishment I had decreed for any person who attempted to give him burial? Yes, I knew the punishment. Did you by any chance act on the assumption that a daughter of Oedipus was above the law? Because if you did, you would have been deeply wrong. No one has a more sacred obligation to obey the law than those who make the law. 
You are a daughter of lawmakers, a daughter of kings, Antigone. You must observe the law. Had I been a scullery maid washing my dishes, I would have scrubbed the greasy water from my arms and gone out in my apron to bury my brother. Oh, what nonsense. Had you been a scullery maid, you would have been satisfied to weep for your brother in your kitchen. But you, you thought that because you were my niece and were going to marry my son, that I shouldn't dare have you killed. You are mistaken. I never doubted for an instant that you would have me put to death. The pride of Oedipus. I can see your father in you and I believe you. Of course you thought that I would have you killed. Your father was like that. You come of people for whom the human vestment is a kind of straitjacket. It cracks at the seams. You spend your lives wriggling to get out of it. Nothing less than a cosy tea party with death and destiny will quench your thirst. But let me tell you, Antigone, those days are over for Thebes. Thebes has a right to a king without a past. My name, thank God, is only Creon. I stand here with both feet firm on the ground. And I have decided that so long as I am king, I will merely devote myself to teaching a little order to this absurd kingdom, if it is possible. Hand you over to be killed? I have other plans for you. You're going to marry human. And you're going to give him a sturdy son. And let me assure you, Thebes needs that boy a great deal more than it needs your death. And don't annihilate me with those eyes. I know that you think I'm a brute. But the fact is, I've always been fond of you. And don't forget, the first doll you ever had came from me. Where are you going? You know very well where I'm going. Antigone. Do you realize that if the people of Thebes find out what you have tried to do, that it would be impossible for me to avoid putting you to death? I must go bury my brother. Why do you tell me all this? You hold a treasure in your hands, Antigone. Life. And you were about to throw it away. Go, find Heman. And get married quickly, Antigone. Be happy. Life isn't what you think it is. Life is a child playing around your feet. A tool you hold firmly in your grip. A bench. You sit down upon in the evening. Believe me, the only poor consolation we have in our old age is to discover that what I have said to you is true. Life is nothing more than the happiness that we get out of it. Happiness? Not much of a word, is it? What kind of happiness do you foresee for me? Tell me, what are the unimportant little sins that I shall have to commit before I'm allowed to sink my teeth into life and tear happiness from it? Do you love Heman? Yes. The Heman I love is young and hard, faithful and difficult to satisfy the way I am. But if what I love in Heman is to be worn away like a stone step by the thread of the thing you call life, the thing you call happiness, then no. No, I do not love him and... You don't know what you're talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. I spit on your happiness. I spit on your idea of life. If life must be a thing of fear, lying and compromise, if life cannot be free, gallant, incorruptible, then Creon, I choose death. Scream on, daughter of Oedipus. If you could see how ugly you are screaming those words. Yes, I am ugly. My father was ugly too. Oedipus. But he became beautiful. And do you know when? At the very end, when all his questions had been answered, then he was at peace. Then he became beautiful. Whereas you, look at yourself, Creon. 
the glint of fear and suspicion in the corner of your eye, the crease in the corner of your power-loving mouth. Creon, you spoke the word. A smelly kitchen of politics. Antigone! You, you, what do you want? Give me. I'll go with you now. Where will you go? Creon, if you kill her, you'll have to kill me too. I was with her. I helped to bury Polynices. Oh, no, Sneak. If you die, I don't want to live. I'll do it alone tonight. You hear that, Creon? The thing is catching. Who knows how many people will catch the disease from me? What are you waiting for? Call in your guards. Creon, show a little courage. It only hurts for a minute. Come on. Cook! Guard! At last, Creon. Take her away. 